In Cape Town, South Africa, Imam Muxin Hendricks has a message that's not widely heard among his fellow Muslims or among his fellow Africans either. I think God is not homophobic. We are. <laughs> Hendricks is one of the world's first openly queer Muslim prayer leaders. As head of the Al Khuraba Foundation, he's made it his mission to help other LGBTQ plus Muslims reconcile their faith with their sexual orientation. I remember when I came out uh, at the age of 29, there were no structures in place, uh, support structures uh, for queer Muslims. And I felt it was a very uh, lonely experience. Whatever good befalls you, it is from Allah. In person and through an active presence on social media and the web, Hendricks offers marginalized Muslims spiritual support and counseling. He also provides training and educational services to promote what he calls an Islam that is inclusive and compassion-centered. It's a controversial message. Within mainstream Islam, homosexuality is commonly condemned as sinful. In some predominantly Muslim countries, homosexual activity is a crime, punishable by severe prison sentences or even death. Similar attitudes are widespread across much of Africa. In the beginning of my activism, a lot of the time, probably almost once a week, I would get a message in my box about somebody wanting to run away from, from their country. In South Africa, the 1996 post-apartheid constitution explicitly banned discrimination based on sexual orientation. In 2006, South Africa became the first country on the African continent to legalize same-sex marriage, and it remains the only African nation to do so. But attitudes at the grassroots aren't always as liberal, especially among many South African Muslims. I grew up in a very orthodox, conservative Muslim home. My grandfather was the imam of the mosque. The struggle between my, my, my sexual identity, which is intrinsic to me, and my Islamic identity, which is also something that I would not give up because it's so important for me, was quite a big uh, struggle. Hendrick says the struggle started when he was around five and it became deeper during his adolescence. Often you hear your grandfather talking about, you know, how gay people are going to go to hell, and then you think, well, I'm, I think I'm one of them, you know, and how can my grandfather speak of a very compassionate God, and at the same time, a God that condemns me for something that I didn't choose? So um, around the age of 16, I sort of just drowned myself in religion because of for fear that I might go to hell. The conflict ramped up even more when he began Islamic studies at a university in Pakistan. So the messages that I was getting was, you know, that, that I need to change and I need to, if I want to become an imam, I have to follow the, the sun, what we call the sunnah of the prophet, the practice of the prophet, and his practice was marriage. So Hendricks got married and had three children, but he says he realized he wasn't being authentic about his sexuality. After six years, he and his wife decided to divorce. Hendricks moved to a farm where he says he fasted and prayed about his situation. One of my conversations with God is, I'm going to not stop fasting until you tell me what it is that you want from me. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with my life? And it ended up by I fasted about 80 days. And close towards the 80th day, I felt very comfortable with my relationship with God, comfortable with my understanding of Islam, and comfortable with who I am as a queer person. Then I said, well, I'm coming out. He told his story to the media and included a hotline number. He was surprised by the response. I had about 150 calls, and 80% of those calls were all positive. People thanking me for being brave to do this. Here and there, there were a few ab abuses that were hurled at me. But by then, I was like, I signed up for this. <laughs> Hendricks has since produced videos to help others. The biggest fear for queer Muslims is being rejected by family and friends. And there's an animated story about a queer Muslim whose mother has trouble accepting that he's gay. It's based on Hendricks' own experience. He says it took his mother 10 years to come to terms with his sexuality. I will take some time. Then I was, I don't care what the world thinks about me now. You know, I have my mother, 
behind me. Hendricks argues for new interpretations of long-standing Islamic condemnations of homosexuality. Uh, because there's no prophetic tradition around homosexuality and there's also the Quran is silent about sexual orientation. He believes stories in the Quran denouncing same-sex encounters are really about something else. It was about either about molestation on the highways or it was about coercive sex. And I'm like, what is the story got to do with me? <laughs> Um, or with anybody who is just innately um, attracted to, to the same sex with no choice of their own. I think it's, um, it's somehow it's, it's got a lot to do with the culture more than what Islam really says about homosexuality. Hendricks broadcasts his ideas widely online and through social media. He's inspired Muslims around the world and he has generated fierce controversy. Often people ask me, you're doing such a dangerous, controversial thing, have you had no death threats? None whatsoever. And I think it's because of my approach to the work. I always say that I'm not confrontational, I'm confrontational. Hendricks says his faith gives him the strength to do his work. I think I would have not survived this if I didn't have a strong faith. And I thank my parents for that. And knowing that God is always there for you. And there were so many experiences in my life that proved that for me. He's also encouraged by the marginalized Muslims he supports. It makes me purposeful. Um, it recharges my batteries, knowing that um, I'm being instrumental in people's lives. I know that my story has given a lot of hope to queer Muslims, and I hope it will continue to do that. He also hopes his story may help lead to a new vision for the faith he loves. And that people can actually get to a point of practicing Islam as a compassion-centered faith, and as an all-inclusive faith, and a faith that is a vehicle for our spirituality. He says he'll keep working to see that happen. I'm Kim Lawton in Cape Town.